Tiffany Hornbeck, Chief Conservator with the Smithsonian Institution Haiti Cultural Recovery Project. And I worked for the Smithsonian's National Museum of African Art for 11 years as an object conservator and uh, wrote my master's art history thesis on Haitian art in the 1950s. Um, my role here at the project is to oversee all of the conservation activities. Um, these mainly involve staffing the center with professional conservators, um, establishing and equipping re-conservation studios, objects, paintings, and paper with equipment and conservation grade supplies, overseeing conservation activities, um, which primarily include assessment, um, stabilization, first aid intervention, and in cases of high cultural value, uh, more involved conservation treatment. A major objective of the project is to um, develop a core of Haitian assistance where we're introducing them to preservation objectives. Um, Haiti, although it has a long tradition of artistic, artistic production, does not have um, any preservation professionals. So we're simultaneously responding to the earthquake disaster while also trying to build an infrastructure of preservation professionals. So we have um, found artists who went to the Ecole Nationale des Arts, and also some chemists who went to um, a program here called Chemtech, who are assisting um, our recovery efforts. Can you tell me a little bit about the piece um, on your desk that you're currently working on? Sure. This is um, a plaster bust displayed in the Musée de Pavillon in the Congo, where it fell off of its um, base and broke into multiple pieces. Um, another Smithsonian conservator did the major part of the reconstruction, and I'm now finishing her work, refining the restorations, and I've begun painting the fills. You can see this area here. The, um, this is an example of a piece that's getting a more, much more involved treatment than a lot of our work because after a disaster, the very first goal is to stabilize the greatest volume of works possible. So only a very small percentage go on to receive a higher degree of aesthetic treatment like this bus is receiving. Um, we're in one of the storage rooms for three-dimensional objects where one of our largest projects is underway. Um, this is the recovery of 337 cut metal sculptures from the Centre d'Art collection. And the collection is extremely rich. We have uh, quite old pieces like this cross from the founding father of this tradition, Georges Leoteau all the way through more contemporary pieces um, of Freddy Coupe. So we have masters like Georges Léotot, Laura Gruyère, Louis Juste Brothers, Gabriel Vianane, and a living master, Serge Jolimont, who has a large um, studio compound in Noailles Croix de Bouquet, an area outside of Port-au-Prince where this tradition is very much still alive. So it's, it's really been wonderful to work on a collection of such breadth and depth. Of these um, 330 pieces, we, they had various conservation problems. Some of them were badly deformed. A lot of them were badly corroded from being in the rubble and having water damage. And um, a number of them also had um, loss of surface coatings like paint and varnish. We've been working with two art historians here to help us with cultural prioritization. Um, after a disaster, you have a huge volume of affected artworks, and so you have to prioritize what will be treated, because conservation treatments are time consuming, and um, you need to make sure you're spending your time on the most important works of cultural patrimony. So of these 337 works, um, 63 have 
been deemed of highest priority. And of those 63, 31 are considered in urgent need of treatment or elevated need of treatment. And these are the objects we are now working on here in the studio. And my colleague Anais Galbo is leading the conservation treatment effort and has already completed nine treatments herself. Can you talk a little bit about what is involved in the treatment process of these particular sure. kinds of artwork? Sure, I'll show you on this object here, for example. It's a good illustration of some of the problems. A lot of the objects had um, some orange rust, and iron is a, although a strong metal, is un its surface is unstable. And there are certain rusts that are stable, typically black or dark brown is a s considered a stable oxidation, but the orange form is an unstable form, and it will continue to accelerate um, if you don't remove it. So our our surface efforts have focused on removing the orange layer um, with mechanical means primarily. And what happens is we end up revealing quite beautiful dark surfaces of metal. Um, the early tradition of this art form did not involve coating the metal, so it's just bare metal. And once you remove the rust, um, it was sort of it reintegrates the object and it stabilizes it. We're in the process of adding a second step to treatment that involves applying a chemical substance um, to stabilize the surface, and we might apply a protective coating of uh, a matte wax to further protect the, the objects. One. Um, our project aims to assist private and public institutions. And this is a painting from the Musée Nader, which um, co the museum collapsed almost entirely during the earthquake. And a number of the works were recovered by um, the Nader brothers, Georges Nader and his wife as well. Um, and about 30 of the most important ones were brought here for, for treatment. This is a, a painting by um, Saint-Louis Blas called L'homme et son chat, and it has a dramatic tear right here, as well as a lot of abrasion to the surface um, from being buried in the rubble and eventually pulled from the rubble. And I'll show you the back of it so you can see the, the damage. This is an example, the kind of structural damage that paintings on canvas often sustained here. And um, this level of, this sort of structural work, it's, it's very time consuming to repair. So again, it's only the, the works deemed of highest cultural value that will receive this type of treatment. And this work will be treated um, sometime this summer. So it's been chosen for that level of treatment. Yeah, hi, I'm Christine Gisla-Bertich. I'm a paintings conservator here in Haiti at the Cultural Recovery Center. Uh, in front of us, we have a painting that I treated recently. This painting was torn in various places. There was one dramatic tear in the middle, and you could see the edges of the rooster, <coughs> of the tear completely open. There were more tears here. There was one large here, about 40 centimeter long. Yeah, just down there. And if you would like to see another one that was, uh, if you looked a little bit like that one that is here, this is the same type of damage that the one that I just showed you was. It's by the same painter, and they were probably in the same room when the earthquake happened. So, yeah, so this... <coughs> It's similar to it. So the first thing I had to do was to flatten the edges of the, of the <coughs> torn uh, pieces, to flatten them because they were very oxidized and very dry. 
and then you use humidity and weight treatment to try to flatten the, the canvas around the edges. And then what I did, I did a tear melting at the back. I will show you. Here you can see where the damage was and all the tear melting that I, that I did. Um, I did what you call a thread to thread technique. You first you glue threads all around the edges to keep the, the torn uh, bits in place. And then I put this adhesive all around it, all on top of it to keep it in place. And it's a uh, adhesive that is uh, quite stable in time and it also moves um, it's quite flexible, so when <coughs> the canvas moves, it kind of adapts to that. So once that was done, we could start with the uh, aesthetical treatment. So you fill all the all the rip pieces and all the holes. You fill it, and then you flatten it, and then you do the in painting at the end. And sometimes it's quite difficult when you have monotonous colors, like the blue one, and when you just have one straight line to in paint, it can be quite tricky. Uh, I just wanted to say that the painting was restored before by, um, some, I don't know by who, but so it also was a treatment of um, de-conserving the painting, or I don't know how you say it. Um, yeah. Well, just I had to remove the old, um, the old conservation that was done, which was like an extra thing to do. That it had like all the touches that were difficult to remove. But yeah. And for this particular painting, how many hours were required to complete the project from beginning to end after you received it and began working on it? Um, yeah, I think I counted about 50 hours on this painting. And then I mean straight hours only working on this painting. But of course you have other things to do, so it's maybe a period of a month or something like that. Because often you also have to wait. You have to put it under pressure, under weight, overnight, or you have to for a few days if it's not completely flattened. So you have to wait for the deformations to, to get flattened and relaxed. So it takes a longer time than the actual work. So there's a lot of waiting time sometimes. And um, what is the attitude of the conservator once they finish a project like this? Something that sustains such severe damage and you have an end result like yeah, this. Well, you just focus <laughs> on the next project or do you feel a, <laughs> like you have a small victory? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it's a fantastic feeling when it, you can see it. It's whole and legible and it looks quite good compared to before. You show it to everybody in the office. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. What? Thank you, Wookie. The table is a table that is exposed in the Festival Organi in the years 1980. Maybe between 1980 and 1982 and 1983. The À peine si que les cas moins qu'à gagner deux ans en plus peintre. Même moi j'étais exposé dans l'institut français d'Haïti. Ces premières expositions que je parais, c'était avec les jeunes peintres haïtiens. C'était en 1981. Et puis les mêmes tout de suite le festival organisé vient présenter peintre ça qui est le Mario Benjamin. Alors comme moi j'étais pour curiosité les deux mêmes générations avec moi. Alors dans la visite exposition. Et ça fait l'œuvre qui vient dans ce centre-là, moi je viens de jouer un tableau, c'est facile que je me situe un tableau. Alors, moi, allemand, je demande à madame qui était propriétaire de la galerie, madame Marie-Alice et Théa, 
Et si le café me retrouve pour tout d'abord, comme je vais gagner un cop et qui te code d'invitation à l'inscription, c'est à vous ça qui te chocote là. Alors, il tout est facile. Et puis, je vais aller dans lundi, dans la galerie Madame Théo là, et puis, il est déclassé code là, et puis, il photographie code là, et puis, il vient avec une photo originale là. Bien que pour le pattern exact, parce que à cause, pendant un prix, il y a une couleur qui était en ligne ou bien qui changeait la dernière. Mais le tableau ça, le mot là, c'était en deux mois sur l'été, il y a 58 bébés sur la dame. Alors nous faisons une réparation dans deux tableaux. Ensuite, nous faisons un toilage là, nous mettons avec des vas et puis on des tissus polyester que nous faisons un toilage là et puis nous mettons sous quatre là. Après ça, nous commençons à faire et retouche la dame. C'est Lucien, Franck Lucien avec moi-même qui a travaillé sous ta sous sous direction de Christine, qui est là, qui est au guide, et qui a guidé nous, travaille là, étape par étape. Okay. So we're working in the portion of the paper studio, serving as a painting studio, with um, a professional professor and artist, Jean-Marin Bernard-Lefort, who is one of our 12 um, restoration assistants, and certainly the most He's working on a painting by Mario Benjamin that belongs to the, we think, the Palais National. And we acquired it, um, it was not on a stretcher, it was flat, rolled, in two separate parts with 58 tears. Um, so they did a large structural treatment under the guidance of Kristen Gisladu Tier to um, repair the tears from the reverse and now to um, in-paint the many scratches and abrasions on the painted surface. We are in one of our storage facilities right now looking at some of the paintings that were recovered from the Centre d'Art. The Centre d'Art um, is a well-known institution that was established in around 1950 um, to encourage Haitian artists to produce art in styles related to the region in which they lived in the country. So artists were invited from all over the country to come, were provided with materials and studio space, and given the opportunity to work. A lot of the most important paintings went on to the Musée d'Art Haitien, but a number of them still remained at the Centre d'Art. This was a gingerbread building that collapsed dramatically during the earthquake, and the staff, uh, a very small staff of five people, mainly the work of two people, pulled the works themselves from the rubble for a month after the earthquake. This was Marise de Rosier and Henri Celestin. They really did heroic work of, the work of first responders, really. And they were very worried about theft and vandalism. It was a huge concern after the earthquake was um, just that the, the cultural patrimony would be lost and sold outside of the country. So it was a primary motivation to recover the works and put them into two metal containers um, that were stored outside the facility for eight months under um, the guidance of a security guard. But the containers were not climatized and the works were just stacked floor to ceiling without um, sort of a method because they were working so fast. The containers were brought to our facility in August and a six month project to um, process them was begun. We hired eight people to um, follow a methodology I established to create an inventory, to photograph the works, to do a simple condition assessment, to surface clean them and vacuum them, and then to provide stable storage conditions. Um, mold was a very big concern because of the conditions in which they were stored. Mold grows at 65% relative humidity, and these were in conditions of 88% and higher relative humidity. So our assistants were, were fully equipped with Tyvek protective equipment, masks, respirators, um, to protect their health when you're working with 6,000 works of art that have mold. 
Centre d'Art collection is divided into three sub-collections, the permanent collection, a temporary collection, and works on consignment. In here we have some of the paintings that are from the permanent collection. We have paintings on canvas and paintings on hardboard. Hardboard could mean masonite or cardboard. The sub-collection for consignment involves works of art by living artists that have they've been held at the Musée d'Art at the um, Centre d'Art for sale. And we're in the process of cataloging these works, and the artists can come here and pick them up um, to take back into their possession. So we're in storage container uh, at the site of the Cultural Recovery Center where we have a number of the fragments from the wall paintings at St. Trinity Episcopal Cathedral that have been lifted from the walls by two professional conservators. The 1951, 11 artists from the Centre d'Art were invited to paint murals at St. Trinity Cathedral. Uh, a cycle of 14 murals was painted of New Testament scenes and they incorporated contemporary Haitians into the scenes, contemporary Haitian life, contemporary Haitian people, and they were both celebrated and controversial at, at, the, at the time. During the earthquake, 11 of the 14 murals collapsed, and the site was left in an unsecure situation for six months, and a number of the fragments were likely taken as souvenirs, perhaps um, outright stolen from the site, and it was a, a real question of vandalism and lack of security. This has been a major um, concern for a lot of patients in the cultural sector after the earthquake, that is that their cultural patrimony is not in safe conditions, and it's vulnerable to theft and vandalism. So one of the most important things we've been able to do is to provide a secure location for works of art. Ideally, a climate controlled location when possible, but certainly a secure location. These fragments have been lifted from the walls by two professional conservators, Viviana Dominguez, a wall paintings expert, and Rosa Lowinger, um, architectural materials expert. And they are working with four art students that we've hired as their assistants. Junior Norelus, Junior Racine, Juan Les Michel, and Frank Fontaine. And a big part of the project is to provide them training in murals conservation. They've been working on scaffolding on site to lift the three remaining murals. We have um, Prophet Dufo's uh, native procession. This is Castera Basile's Baptism of Christ. And here we have a um, figure from Philomène Aubin's The Last Supper. So as we're coming up on a, a year anniversary of our project, and we have six months to go before the next phase, our project is an 18-month project, primarily with the objectives of recovery, safe storage, stabilization, and restoration of some culturally valuable works. A huge portion of our, our work has involved exposing Haitian colleagues to contemporary methods and practices of conservation and to training a new generation of what we hope will be the first generation of Haitians working in the preservation sector. As our project, in its first 18 month configuration comes to a close, we're thinking about the next phase of the project. And we genuinely hope that um, a large emphasis will be placed on training. A continued effort will be made with um, local professionals to determine what aspects of their cultural patrimony are most important and worthy of saving for future generations and that we can find um, appropriate funding sources to enable 
the preservation sector to to be born, to develop, and to flourish here in Haiti to preserve the cultural patrimony for future generations.